Hi, I'm Paul Cotool, uh, and I wish to speak to you about my grandfather, uh, Luke O'Toole, who was General Secretary of the Gaelic Athletic Association at the time of Bloody Sunday on the 21st of November 1920. Uh, Luke had actually a second role, and that was uh, he was the groundsman for the, for the pitch on the site as well. So uh, the, to oversee both uh, functions, the GAA uh, provided him with a house on site so that he could oversee these duties and roles. The house was actually sited over in the very corner between the old canal end and uh, old Hogan stand and on that site was the house and that's where Luke reared his family and where our parents uh, were and it's their memories that they uh, experienced on that day from that from in and around that house uh, on that day. Seamus will recall that uh, he was outside the house and heard this in, in, enormous sound and which was followed by the sight of an, uh, an, an aeroplane flying very low over Crow Park and followed shortly by commotion and uh, gunshot uh, fire. With that, with the shock of that, he ran into his house, into the house. His grandmother, my, 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 he ran into his mother, my grandmother, Bridget O'Toole, sent him upstairs for safety. He was followed very shortly up that stairs by a number of gents who were asking where is the escape route that they knew Luke O'Toole had from that house. You'll see the, photo, the photograph here up behind me on the wall. That, is, that was a photograph of Michael Collins, Harry Boland and my grandfather poking around a ball at the Leinster Hurling final, final some uh, couple of months before. And Luke uh, and my bridge with my grandmother had regular 25 card games in that house in Crow Park and Collins, Boland, uh, Dan Breen, JJ Walsh, Jack Shouldois and many others visited there uh, for those games. Now bearing in mind that the War of Independence was uh, very much uh, uh, raging outside so they had to have an escape route uh, uh, just in case the house was raided during those uh, card games. An escape route they had upstairs under the, the bedroom under the bed, they had a large plank, and that plank was used to open the, the uh, open window and at the back of Luke's house, and that uh, to gain access into Bertie Donnelly's next door house, and that was the the, the route. Those my father witnessed those men escaping on and uh, away from Crow Park. While all this was was uh, was while while all this uh, while that activity was going on, the auxiliaries outside realised, or someone told them that. People were escaping out through Luke O'Toole's house and they surrounded the house and, and broke in. The auxiliaries uh, uh, gave my grandmother, Bridget O'Toole, appalling abuse uh, and caused absolute mayhem in the house um, and went on for quite a bit apparently. Uh, outside, an, an uncle of mine, Jerry, uh, was, uh, had, was only seven years of age and he had a little favourite spot over to the right from the house that he used to sit and watch matches in Crow Park. And it was there that in the midst of all this pa uh, you know, pandemonium and, and gunfire, was so frightened, and he tells this himself, that he was neither able to run nor talk. And it was a British officer noticed this young boy, came over to him and said, um, who are you? Who are you with? Where are you from? And so on. He says, well, I'm from that house over there. And the British officer brought him over by hand into the house. And it was that British officer, thankfully, uh, demanded that the auxiliaries uh, refrain from their abuse and, and pandemonium and asked him to leave the house. The other memories to have was later that evening from upstairs, the bedroom window upstairs, where they uh, saw the, the casualties uh, outside. Some of the casualties were outside and had coverings over them. And it was, that was when it really struck home how appalling uh, an atrocity was visiting Crow Park that day. The following morning, Luke O'Toole and members of my uncles and aunts went around to the various sites around Crow Park where the innocent had fallen and knelt down and said a decade of the rosary for the, for the deceased and the bereaved. We, the family of Luke O'Toole, are extremely proud of the measured way Luke handled that um, uh, appalling atrocity that was visited on Crow Park uh, on Bloody Sunday on the 24th of November 1920.